Welcome, I'm Ernie Goss, research faculty member here with the Craig School of Business at California State University, Fresno. Today we're releasing our survey results from our businesses in the four area, the four county er metropolitan area of Fresno. And that the index here is a leading economic indicator for the month of August. This is of course the first business day of each month. We released this number, the number that came out this morning and folks it was pretty good. The, uh, let me give you the headline. The headline is the San Joaquin Valley economic indicator is healthy for August. And on top of that, more than one third, unfortunately, are reporting negative fallout from this drought, which continues. And in fact, we ask about what, what if this drought continues for the area? And that's, unfortunately, it is the negative of the survey for the month of August. At least 70% of the business that we survey indicated if this, this drought continues, it's going to create real problems for their business. So let's keep an eye. Of course, you don't need me to tell you that. Let's keep an eye on, on what happens with the drought and some of the fallout from the drought. Now, the index was above when we look at the overall index, which again is sort of this is the canary in the coal mine. In other words, this is an, uh, a leading economic indicator and it's been performing very well for for the uh, uh, Fresno economic area, and it's up f above 50. The 50 is growth neutral, 0 to 100, 50 is growth neutral. It's ab above 50 for the ninth straight month. It went from 57.3 to 57.6. Now that's a good number. The national number last month was 57.3. So you get a real good idea that this economy, this San Joaquin Valley economy, is growing, moving back. In fact, we have a record number of individuals out there working in the San Joaquin Valley today. Records, more than, more than we've ever had in the region. Now, unfortunately, construction has still got a ways to go. We are not back to those uh, employment in construction still down from the recession. Manufacturing still lower than what we had before the recession began, about 6,000 jobs, but we're getting back both of those construction losses and those manufacturing losses. Now, as I said, one third of the businesses indicated there's uh, that a fallout from the drought, and of course that's that's real. It has been a drag on the economy, no doubt about it. If it continues, it's going to be a more of a drag. And here I want to show you, and you'll see here the graph. This is a graph of the overall index, a leading economic indicator for the U.S., the U.S. that comes out the same time, the first business day of the month, and you see here the San Joaquin Valley, and you see that index, a beautiful number, at least beautiful and beautiful for an economist moving higher, that's in the red. The blue is the, the U.S. number. Mo also moving ahead, and so we're seeing better economic times ahead. Now, again, I'll, let me add, I know many of you are saying, if things are so good, why do I feel so bad? Well, the reason is, and the primary reason is, that, that the region and the U.S. is adding jobs at a pretty good clip, but the jobs are in the low wage sectors and also a lot of them are part timers. So what we're going to look for is when that changes, when we begin to hire more full time workers and more on the highway, in the high wage sector and that would be construction and manufacturing. As I said, it's been growing just not quite as fast as we'd like to see. Now uh, when we ask about job openings, about one in four uh, versus applicants, job openings versus applicants. One in four indicated that openings were greater than the num number of openings were greater than the number of applicants. That's a good signal, but of course uh, we need to see that growing even more. And, and what is that? You 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 may be questioning that number, but what we're seeing, at least in some areas, is skill mismatches. In other words, the job openings here needing certain skills. Not that many individuals qualify, so we don't see enough applicants in those areas. What else came out of our August survey? Inflation gauge is down from 70.2 to 66.0. So inflation's moving lower, at least in this survey, the San Joaquin Valley survey, the national survey, and some of the other regional surveys. Inflation that economists like me thought would be ticking up and moving higher, it just doesn't look like it's going to happen right now, but we've got to keep an eye on that number. Let's look at it, uh, keep an eye on it going forward. The unemployment rate, unexpectedly, while things improved for the San Joaquin Valley, the unemployment rate ticked up 
That would be ticked up for the month of July. That's according to Bureau of Labor Statistics. But uh, that's a lot to do with labor participation. In other words, a lot of individuals that were sitting on the sidelines, not counted as unemployed, came back into the labor market. They're being counted as they look for a job. So the labor force participation went up. That's a good thing. Um, as I said, we're, uh, we're seeing a record number of workers working in the region. And uh, food processing is look, looking stronger. On the negative side, uh, temporary employment is still too much of a factor. We'll, we need to see those workers becoming permanent workers for the companies and permanent and full time. That would be uh, 36 hours and above. Now, okay, so all in all, it was a good report. I would say a very good report considering what we saw back in the bad old days of the recession. So it's looking better there. What should you keep an eye on going forward? Case Shiller Home Price Index. Keep an eye on that number. Combined with the Census Bureau releases their data on housing, number of housing starts. So we're not seeing enough starts and we're seeing housing prices, growth I should say, coming down. That's not such a bad thing. But the housing numbers, not a uh, little trouble there. And that's housing numbers I'm talking about for the U.S. there. Wage growth year over year, that number comes out the first Friday of each month. Uh, that'll be, of course, September the 5th and October the 3rd. Look for way, and this is a very important number because why is it important? The Federal Reserve is watching that number. The Federal Reserve wants to see it picking up, believe it or not. They want to see it picking up above 3%. Of course, it's been around 2%. So keep an eye on that number. If it should move even lower, meaning year over year, that would be, of course, uh, August to, from August of last year to August of this year. That number, if it moves below 2%, below 1%, that's, that's a problem. We're not seeing enough wage growth. If it moved above 3%, then that's a concern about inflation. So the sweet spot there, of course, is 2 to 3% is, is a good range there. Uh, look for the CPI, the Consumer Price Index for September and October, released on September the 17th and October the 22nd. I just, that's, I'm wrong there. That's the Inflation Index for August and September on the September the 17th and October the 22nd. Again, looking for a number, year, a month, the monthly number, that's around two-tenths of one percent to up to three tenths of one percent. Those, that's a pretty good range there. Anything below that, concern of deflation. Anything above that, concern of inflation. The Fed is, Fed is in this point of trying to detect these turning points. And anytime you get to a turning point, we are there. That's when it gets very difficult. Anybody can predict when you're moving in a straight line fashion. It's when you get these turning points it gets difficult. We're on a turning point in terms of inflation. Purchasing Management Index, that's the number I just showed you. We just showed you for the, for the San Joaquin Valley. Keep an eye on that going forward. That's released the first business day of the month. That'll be October the 1st. And quarter three GDP number comes out October the 30th. 30th. What, is the, what are the risks that you need to keep an eye on? Keep an eye on the inflation gauge. Higher inflation, of course, not so good. Too low of inflation, not so good. Again, the sweet spot is two to two and a half, up to three percent. Anything above is a concern. Housing market, keep an eye on that. We need to see the number of starts going up, the housing starts, more activity there. Prices wouldn't be so bad to see the prices come down according to the case Schiller Home Price Index. Oil prices, if you should see them bounce above $100 a barrel again, due to supply disruptions, of course, that's from the Middle East. Not likely. We're moving actually lower on oil prices, so that's that's a concern, but not a not a big risk. Trade embargoes with Russia and China, that is a concern, of course, as as Vladimir Putin is pushing Russia into the Ukraine, and that is a real real big issue. Not so much in that we're getting a lot of trade coming out between the San Joaquin Valley and Russia. It's just that these trade embargoes typically spread so that you do have impacts, indirect impacts for, for uh, the San Joaquin Valley. Finally, watch for Europe. If Europe continues to slow, that's the economy, slows. If it should move into recession, that's a real, real issue and we've got to watch out for it. What would that mean for us? Well, it means we sell fewer goods to Europe, 
but it also means they tend to lower their interest rates, which tends to push up the value of the dollar. And as the dollar goes up, that's bad for agriculture. Agriculture is very important to the San Joaquin Valley. So that's it, folks. That was a pretty good economic report. I'm Ernie Goss, a research faculty member here at the Craig School of Business with California State University Fresno. I'm very happy to be, be with you. It was a good report, and between now and then, may your economic cup runneth over, and I will see you here October the 1st. Thank you.